and, and that's a perfect segue into why you why suck. i not suck. you not you. you 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 why, why you, you suck, suck in tournaments and how to be better prepared so you suck less oh we have look at I, I didn't turn on my comment section all these people were writing stuff yeah, the best comment was by Rob Johnson when you're going on and on about your. Oh, you're about the, I saw that. I don't Grandpa even know about Simpson that. talking I, about onions on his belt because that was the style at the time. But they didn't, didn't have any white onions because of the war, so they had to get yellow onions. I have no <laughs> idea what that's all about. Old man yells at the sky. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> all right. Well, I've so never seen we... the Simpsons, so I'm sorry. You've never what? You heard me. You, you know never... what? There's a list of things I've never done. That is one. The other one was that dumbass movie with the with the lamp, okay? And that'll never happen. Which is a beautiful lamp back there. It really ties your office together. It does. It ties it together. It brings all of the memorabilia together with the leg. Did you did you ever figure <laughs> out where that lamp came from? Did I'm you in all your investigations with you called you the know, company, I, right? I did. I called the company, and I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pursue it any longer. If you don't come clean, that's it. So that's it. What? That's it. I'm not going to tell you anything. I did. I called the company and they said for me to call back, they would look up who ordered it for me. And, and I didn't then? do that. I didn't do it. You didn't call back? I didn't call back. Oh, it's old news now. Now it is. They won't bother with me now. Yeah. So, but it's you an should... excellent gift. I thank whoever did it. You know. It really lights up the room. Let me tell I you. I wish I knew who it was. I sent them a ball. It wasn't me. I just okay, want to let you know. You. I don't believe you. And it wasn't Jim Young. Jim's saying he did it. It wasn't Jim. It wasn't Jim. So, whoever so, did it, I'm going to send the ball. So come clean. <laughs> well, there'd be like 85 guys in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. We're going to have 100 comments here. That's one way to get a ton of comments. I'm going to get a staff. I'm going to give a staff contract to whoever sent me the lamp. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's got his fingers crossed out off camera there, guys. Don't fall yeah, for it. Exactly. <laughs> So, okay, so how many times, and I'm talking to everybody in the chat, how many okay. times have you gone to nationals or gone bowl day, a regional or something of magnitude, and you've, you're feeling good, you go there, and all of a sudden, you just completely bomb out of the tournament, and you shake your head leaving, what the hell happened? How did I perform so poorly? How, what, I, I can't even do anything right why what what's the big deal what's the difference here why did i completely fail at this tournament and we have a good little presentation for you and we're going to talk about it all and you guys can chime in with questions and comments we're reading the chat with you guys yeah please do so let's start with the number and these are in no particular order really i mean we kind of organize it a little bit but uh, a lot of different points and counterpoints here so first one you're out of your element. So I think one, that's the, the biggest one for a first timer. Sure. For the first time. And no matter what tournament it is, it can be a, a local house tournament. Mm -hmm. If you've never bowled a tournament, you have to, um, you have to get the feel, you know what? And I'll give some advice. If you're bowling a tournament for the first time, and I don't know how many people tune in are first timers. Um, don't bowl the first squad of the tournament. If there's a multiple squad tournament, do not bowl the first squad. Yeah. Go go look around, walk around, watch. Get, get a feel for the get a feel yeah. for everything. Get kind of acclimated yeah. to the building and absolutely. Absolutely. Just the feel of the place and yeah, yeah. Don't bowl that vibe. first squad where they good morning bowlers, welcome to the blah blah blah. Good luck and good bowling. And you've never bowled a tournament before. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you know, you don't know the cross, you don't know the the uh yeah, it could be pattern. A no, it could be a no tap tournament, but it's different still. Just, absolutely. Just go watch the first squad. That's one advice I give to every first time bowler. Don't bowl the first squad. Right. Well, you know, it's, or just it, throw your money away. Yeah, you know. for your first tournament, you know, there there's yeah. a tournament out west, which is a pretty prestigious event in Modesto Masters. And they have two squads, A and B. Okay, so A is limited to how many people is a 32-lane house, I think. So they limit it to 64, two, right. on a, two on a lane. And then B squad, they don't turn anyone away. So if you want to bowl the <laughs> tournament, so it is very imperative for that tournament to get on A squad. 
because right. you could be bowling on a pair that has yeah, eight 10 people instead right. of four. Right. And that pattern is going to break down where you're not going to, and Absolutely. the scoring pace is high. It's just a house shot. Right. Right. So it's very yeah. important to get on the A squad at all. Costs. Yeah. In that case. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. Number, number one is you're not bowling league. You know, you get into a groove, you know, you got your table, you got your little setup, you know, you're, you know, your center, you're very familiar, you know, you say hi to the, to the snack bar lady, the bar lady, the, the front desk person. Right. You know, you know what the lanes do, you know what the approaches are, you know. Yep. But you go to a strange house, they yeah. all come into play and it all comes into play. Sure. Everything's different. Yeah. Also the right. format, you know, when you go bowl yeah. a regional, you know, you have to learn a few things. You know, you're not just yeah. staying on. You're bowling eight games of qualifying typically in a regional. Or at least that's what it was before, eight or nine. Right. So you have to move every game. Yep. And sometimes those moves aren't just one pair over. Sometimes I've done one and then two, then three. And then it, it, it goes changes like that. But then yep. the big one I see for new bowlers. I is just saw that. <laughs> learning the lane courtesy. Yeah, the double jump rule. That's incredible. Double <laughs> I jump. Go, I go, you go, he goes, I go. Right. Hmm. If you don't know the, the double jump courtesy right. and you're trying to figure it out on the fly, I've seen so many new bowlers get taken completely out of the tournament just because they can't get the double jump right. <laughs> and it the guy the on the pin next to you is yelling at you. Right. Because you double jumped them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got a seasoned veteran next to you just staring at you, giving you daggers. Or the other one is the guy next to you is horrible, and he's still yelling at you because he's got nothing better to do, and he's bowling bad. Mm -hmm. But you're double jumping him. But right. when you have a, a veteran doing it, it's a little different. Now your, your tournament's basically done because you don't know if I should worry about bowling or when do I get up on the approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, you got to know the rule in that. I bowl tournaments where the left lane went left and the right lane went right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's another different thing. If you forget that, yeah. sure, you end up on the wrong pair and people are looking for you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I didn't bowl with you guys before. That's right. You're not supposed to. Or you only bowl with the two guys on your, on your lane. You know, yeah. you get over there and go, this guy's new, but so yeah. do the other guys. What happened yeah. to my guys? <laughs> yeah, can you, can you imagine being like a 22-year-old rookie and getting yelled at by Pete Weber three pairs over? <laughs> or who I got was, yelled at in the PBA. Who was a hothead back in the day, yeah. Well, I got yelled at by Goose, Goose uh, Harry Golden, mm -hmm. because Eugene McCune went up on the left lane when he was bowling on the right. Okay. Oh. So, okay. <laughs> he was loft in the gutter cap. Got it. Yeah, but he was yeah. yeah. But he was up on the left, and I and I got yelled at because I wasn't up on the approach. I said, "I don't go yet." <laughs> <laughs> it's not my turn. It's not my turn. He went. Now it's now it's my turn. I'm on the same lane. And then the other guy in the lane next was complaining. Two guys, no one ever went up on the right lane. I yeah. know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, getting into a rhythm in those tournaments, if yeah. you're, say, a say, if you're a slower bowler or if you like to bowl fast, but you're crossing with slower bowlers or you're on the pair next to slower bowlers. Right. Just waiting sometimes, just watching the Statue of Liberties up there that just – sit there and pose before they throw their shot it's like what could you possibly be thinking about absolutely. absolutely like how does your hand not get sweaty just sitting there i right? don't know so i bowled the tournament one time new york garden city bowl pba stop my buddy bowled um a squad and i was on b and um he crossed from marshall holman oh geez first tournament ever and garden city bowl had the round ball returns the amf magic circle ball returns the fan in the middle we both leagued there so you always put your rosin bag on the fan and um kid gets um, up throws a strike on his right lane marshall gets up he's a temp in <clears throat> he walks back it's up on the right lane he's a temp and walks back takes the kid's rosin bag and throws it through the back of the building <laughs> he said if i want rosin on my ball i'll put it on there i don't need your rosin <laughs> how do you think the kids next four five games <laughs> Just things like that can get you out of a tournament in a hurry. Anyway. Yeah. Getting yelled at by a Hall of Famer. That yeah. that yeah. that's that's scarring. That's type uh yeah. ther therapy type stuff. 
Right, exactly. Exactly right. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever survive. <laughs> yeah, I just I just wanted to compete in a tournament and now I gotta see you for the next eight weeks. Yeah, right. Or even if it's you got uh, it's eighteen games. That was game one. Yeah. You know, so good, good luck the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah, and, and don't put your hand out to give him five after he throws a shot. <laughs> anyway, that uh it's it's all environment in that case. You're out of your element, you're not used to it. Um you go there, and I tell you, go get acclimated. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and even if it's a, a no tap tournament, it's your first tournament ever. Go down yeah, and learn a little bit. Yeah, if it's if it's an option, you know, like with regionals, you typically have yeah. a practice session. Right. Go go bowl the practice session. You don't have to bowl the whole time. You know, usually yeah. the practice yeah. sessions are two hours long. Do not bowl the entire two hours. No, and and try different lanes. As a matter of fact, <laughs> figure out what your cross is and only practice on those lanes. <laughs> i mean that's smart sure yeah but... i've seen people do that and they go you know i'm going to practice on the high end for a little while practice on the low end for a little while and uh boy I didn't, that pair was so different did you practice on it no <laughs> it yeah like, you know i never of... when i when i if i ever for a while there i was practicing on on the practice session but you can never take what you see on friday into no. saturday so much because the 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 lanes are going to be a little bit different from day to day and they're going to get tighter as they go. So right. if I go into Saturday with the game plan dead set on what I, what I saw on Friday. No, I know it. I know because people aren't breaking them down the same way. They're, they're going to be right. playing different parts of the lanes all throughout right. Friday to try to try different yeah. things Yeah, where but, nobody's going to yeah. be touching certain zones on Saturday. But if you're going to be moving pairs and you know, the pairs you're going to be moving to, you might as well go throw balls on those pairs. Yeah. You know, get, get, make some part of the preparation. Write it down. Yeah, write, write it, it down. down. Right. Yeah. Parker keeps a journal. I still think he does. Yeah. Um, on every pair that he bowls on and keeps it in his notes for the next time they come back to centers. Right. Right. Nowadays, with all of the electronics, it's easy. Put it in your phone. Yeah. Well, you, know? you, you probably still have your PDA. <laughs> My what? <laughs> your PDA. What is that? <laughs> your pda you know what a pda is i don't i don't what is it i forget what it stands for <laughs> somebody in the chat with personal um you see you don't even know what it means you're just throwing out letters now <laughs> pda i don't know what I, I never had that i don't know what it is so uh, personal digital assistant yeah whatever you That's made what that it up for. you made no, that up i did not so anyhow you're out of your element Next, format, you got to learn the format. You got to get your get rid. You got to get used to the place. Yeah, learn learn lane courtesy if it's double cross like a PBA event. You got to learn that ahead of time. Right. All right. Next. Go ahead. Nerves. That's interesting. And nerves can start before you even get into the building. That's right. You know, if, you know, with the nationals coming looming, you have your date set. When you start yep. thinking about it ahead of time, you say, oh, yeah. you know, I heard, you know, the lanes are really hard and doubles and singles. I heard this and that. I don't know if I could play that shot. What should I bring? You start all yeah. of a sudden second guessing about everything now, all of a sudden, before you even get there. So. So, so one year we're going down to nationals in Corpus Christi. And uh, my buddies come to town. We're going to drive down together. And we go to stop and have lunch. And as I'm having lunch, they call out my license plate that somebody broke into my car. <laughs> I had a 350Z and they broke into the back, shattered the back window and stole my uh, clothes. And your eight track cassettes. My eight, Yeah, right. So now I got to go home, take my wife's truck, drive back down. And I'm figuring there's no way I'm going to bowl good. Yeah, I'm having, yeah. Right. I, I did. I bowled decent. I shot over for the for the event. Uh, but it was a matter of being experienced where I knew once I stepped on the approach, it was all business. It wasn't you have to leave what's what's bothering you at the door. And that's not easy to do. But, you know, it's just uh, you're going to have things happen before you get to the tournament. That you're you just, have to set aside. You're just a resilient, tough well, you know here. what? You have to realize whatever happens is not the end of the world. And even if you bowl bad, it's not the end of the world. And that's the biggest problem people have, that they get nervous about bowling bad. Yeah. You're not going to retire off the money you win in bowling at no. this one tournament. No. no. Uh-uh. 
you know, people used to always tell me how calm I was in the finals, even if I bowled bad. And my answer to them was always the same. <clears throat> I'm up here bowling in the finals. You're watching. Yeah. Who had a better day? You were so calm. Yeah. It's, if I bowled bad. It's the, <laughs> it's the it's, prescription quaaludes. No, it's, it's what it is, right? <laughs> but I used to tell them, if I bowl bad, I'm still doing better than you did. So I don't care if you watch me bowl bad. I made the finals. I'm I'm in the top four. You know, when I bowled on the, on the TV shows on Long Island, the same way. I was calm about it because I made the show. You didn't. And everybody at home didn't make it. They were wishing they could be on TV. Yeah. All those you know. armchair quarterbacks, I tell you. Absolutely. On the sideline, yeah. wishing yeah. they were you. That's exactly right. That's exactly what they were doing. Mm -hmm. you know? So. <laughs> so, I mean, the stress, I mean, the stress of traveling. I'm, yeah, I'm experiencing that already right now, Phil. Yeah, but you know why? Because you're cheap. I, That's the I am. It's, it's a matter of principle. Oh, you're frugal. It's a matter of principle. You're going away for a couple of days. It's a couple of hundred bucks more. What's this, the big deal? This trip is going to all in all cost probably $2,000. You know how nice of a place I can go to in Hawaii for that? Then go. We, don't, we, won't, we won't miss you. Hey, don't threaten me. <laughs> the guys don't even know you. I, of all people, won't miss you, and I know you. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to see you the week before, so that's enough. That's exactly right. That's I got my fill of in the month of June. You got your fill sure. of fill. You got your fill of fill. That's true. Jim says I got to pay for my new golf simulator. He's absolutely right. That's right. Anyway, so yeah, you're Thanks. right. Travel toys aren't cheap. Travel yeah. is um, is always an issue. Um, yeah. You're no longer the top dog in your league or center. You're in a 80 lane center now. Yeah. yeah. Here in the stadium, there's bowlers from all over the country. He just marched out to a song. Yeah. Know, that was Some pretty cool. Katy Perry song, probably. Again. Yeah, you, and the guy that's probably going to do the best, the guy that was dancing to it. Right. Does anybody, <laughs> what's the walkout song? Who's bold nationals already? I don't know the walkout song. What? I I'm not asking. Pay. I know you haven't bowled. I'm asking the chat. No, I mean, even when I bowl, I don't know what it is. I know, because, you know. These modern songs, you know, a little Sinatra true. or something on the way out. Yeah. So. So I don't even know what it is, but that's that's always, um, a, a, you know, not it just gets your adrenaline going. If you've never walked out, um, you know, walk down the center of the, of the stadium, go left, go right. You know, I walked out as Maverick one year. That's full why jumps, need, full jumpsuit. And that's why I need friends. I need new friends. That's why things like that. No, you just need but, friends. That's the I difference. Do. I have friends. I have friends. <laughs> I'm the best friend oh. you got. No. <laughs> exactly. What movie? <laughs> um, so, you know, you want to bow your best. You, you you got a lot on the line. You, maybe so you never bowled for money before. There we go. Joseph said uh, Chad Murphy won't release the song until after Nationals. Dang. <laughs> 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 Uh, I only bowl good when they play, uh, you know, Billy Joel songs or something. Anyway. Yeah. Piano man. Piano man. Um, you know, I had a little bit different upbringing. I bowled, um, I bowled some tournaments, but I bowled, I bowled a lot of action. So I was used to bowling for money. Right. You know? So that, that was a little easier. Um, but not the first time I bowled. The first time I bowled, I bowled terrible. It was a house shot. It was a wall. People were striking like crazy, and I, I shot way under. Mm -hmm. um it's good for you it was good for me but you, you know what you should have paid attention well during this course i should exactly <laughs> <laughs> so they, there's places that are intimidating get there early walk around get used to it mm. you know yeah the worst thing is you can quit starting to question your abilities you know when you when yeah, you start yeah. it's like quicksand you, one thing goes wrong and then all of a sudden yeah. you start your mind starts spacing a little bit, then you forget to do something else. And then all of a sudden you like start thinking about your mechanics. If you start thinking about your mechanics in a big tournament, if you start thinking about your mechanics in league, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. So yeah, you can't do that. You can't think about mechanics. Once you step on the approach, it's got to be like, uh, what, what was that movie with, um, Kevin Costner, uh, love it a game with a mechanism. When you get on the approach, you, you have to have that blackout. Where you think of nothing but letting go of the ball. Johnny Petraglia said one time, and he said, I mean, Johnny had Johnny forever, about I already knew I was going to strike before I threw that ball. Mm -hmm. I already yeah. struck. I just have to throw the shot. I just have to throw the shot. Yeah, basically. That's what he said. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to have that mindset. You can't be thinking when you're bowling. Now, when you come off the approach, you want to think about what, what my moves are and stuff like that. But when you get up there, there can't be any doubt in my mind that that, that shot's not going to be executed properly. Yeah. Which brings the us, get your nerves under control. Which brings us to our next point of topic, which leads into lack of confidence. Yeah. Well, you know. So when things you, start to go downhill and yeah. you start to struggle, yep. whereas in league, you, you know, even keel, spares are easy, strikes are easy. The right. game is easy, no worries. Yep. yep. All of a sudden, you get to the tournament. Dun, dun, dun. Things aren't going so well. <laughs> and then you get that debt grip. Yes. And your body, body stiffens up and you're no longer smooth. Yep. And if that and if that keeps up, another thing goes wrong, you miss a spare or two that are easy. Yep. Develop the full on yips. You got to get that crowbar to get it off your hand. Uh, We've all been there. You got to hey, not have it. Got to have it. Got to relax. I was like, all I got to do is stay clean this game and I make the cut. You know, yep. you know how impossible that, that sounds after like, <laughs> you're like, okay, well, I opened the first frame. Oh, no big deal. It's the first frame. Second yeah, one, totally flat, flag an easy spare. Well, I stuck no, out. No, 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 all right. I, I just got to get back into it. Double. No problem. Now I need a seven bagger to make the cut. <laughs> now, now I need a six bagger and hope that guy opens in the yeah, tenth. Yeah, yeah. Don't and don't scoreboard watch. That'll get you in trouble. Now, yeah. Guys, well, some guys, some guys, they flourish on that, and some guys put too much pressure on themselves by scoreboard watching. Well, you know what? When I say that, I'm gonna give another tip. Maybe this is a good tip. I think it is. Uh, you have to calculate what your scoring pace is versus the field. Yeah, that's important. What the scoring pace is, but it's hard to. I mean, you go into nationals knowing what the scoring is. Oh, absolutely. But I'm you know what about, the leaders are. I'm talking about a regional or something. Yeah, right? right. You got to know the scoring pace. So you're at a two zero pace and two team pace is what's the what is it looks like it's going to take. Mm -hmm. You're going to run out of games because your score won't be high enough in any game after a certain point to get you there. Yeah. So your move has to be more upfront and more drastic. You better put together some eight baggers. Exactly. To make so up you got for a, it. Yeah, you got a 2-0 and an E2 team, and you have six games to get there. By the third game, you're out of the wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need 260, 260 to get there, and you ain't shot higher than two team. So you got to pay attention to the scoreboard in that sense, but you can't be watching your game, your score. You got to worry about one frame, one shot at a time. It can't be, you know, well, I need a five-bagger here. Well, I need a seven-bagger here. You know, you can't be – you get to that, you're done. There have been multiple tournaments like that where I was kind of out of the number going into yeah. the last game of mm -hmm. qualifying. Right. Knowing I needed that seven bagger and I miraculously put it together. Yeah, I've, I've done that. I've it's done like that. The desperate, not desperation, but just kind of like the Hail Mary move. Like mm -hmm. I have nothing to lose. I'm already out of it. I might as well yeah. try this. Yeah. And I really got to focus it. I like, I get hyper focused when I know I need a number where if I'm in, you know, the second or third game. I'm like, once okay, had a, I still got time. I once had a coach tell me in college, if you pitch that good to like you did to get out of trouble before you got into trouble, you wouldn't have been in trouble at all. It's mindset. <laughs> it's what it was. It's a mindset. Yeah. So it's it just, is. You know, just like how Pete Weber used to amp himself up on TV <laughs> and maybe even make up something that might have happened in the crowd or something bothering him or, you know, right. Right. Just to get right. him in that mindset where he's angry. But, and but kinda... anger and controlling your emotions, you know, are two different things. I mean, you have to get your emotions under check and you have to be even keel when you're up on the approach. Mm -hmm. After off the approach, different story. Yeah. You know, and I put that so, note in there, negative self-talk, but it's very common with bowlers. Even the greatest bowlers yeah. are the worst self-help talkers in the world right right <laughs> right exactly <laughs> it's a good thing that some of them are not mic'd up let's just start there let's, especially during qualifying <laughs> sometimes you hear it if you're watching bull tv or you know the streaming yeah, yeah, you can hear yeah. it sometimes off in the distance right if someone's frying out a little bit um yeah yeah <laughs> if you know what to listen for all exactly. right which leads us into our next point 
rushing. Yeah, it so, gets back to that mind that that in the moment. Slowing the game down. And in, in, when you're in a big arena or the stadium, you're going to find that the games go by really, really fast. All of a sudden, you blink and you're already in the sixth frame of the first game. And you're like, whoa, I haven't struck yet. <laughs> All of a sudden, the panic yeah. starts to set in. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. You have to realize that each shot is its own entity. You might you get know, three, four shots of practice, and then off you go. And that's – I'm not even loose, barely loose by then. So no, I have to begin to prepare myself for the shot where I can't bend, you know. as And then as I start to get loose, you got to make that other adjustment. But you have to keep and, – and we said it earlier. You have to keep that 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 tempo. You, you, you can't be – up and down it's got to be even keel yeah um and that's that where that game pre-shot be routine over. right right yeah your pre-shot routine is the key you have to be able to um control a moment because next thing you know you're going to look up you're in the eighth frame you're shooting 140 mm-hmm. and you say what the hell happened you know and not only on the first shot but you don't strike on the first ball you got to Basic spare, 610, yeah. something like that, 3610. Don't just grab your spare ball and get up there and set your feet and go. <laughs> you know how many pins people throw away by not caring as much on the spare shot? How many people blow their clean 30 in the first frame? <laughs> <laughs> and also my 159. 159 exactly well so you have you have there's to two more there's two like more blocks so, right <laughs> you know uh yeah so we got a question that i'm gonna put go up there is from joseph how do you stop the negative self-talk once you find yourself doing it um don't talk to yourself because you're probably your worst enemy in that case <laughs> no i'm serious you know you sit yeah. there and say oh man i threw that one terrible like, okay, oh, the shots the shot's gone. That you was can't pitiful. do anything about it. It's gone. Okay? If you're gonna dwell on the negative, then you're better off just stay home and bowl Tuesday morning mixed league. Right. Um once you let go of the ball and it's gone, you can't go back and say, I I suck, I didn't do well, I was a bad shot, because it's the shot's gone again. Now, if you throw multiple shots like that. And I want people to take this the wrong way. Maybe you shouldn't be at the tournament. Right. If you can't execute. Or you have to learn how to execute. And it's going to be expensive um, if you've never done it before. But the most important thing is to turn around and and, and think positive that right. okay, you know, I didn't let I didn't throw that one really good. I probably got quick with my feet. This is after you're off the approach. You I'm need gonna, to gonna, spin the negative result into right. a positive exactly right future man. and like hey you know i think that one wasn't as clean off my hand i really right. need to work right. on on pure in this one i really needed right. to get it off my hand a little cleaner and then right. when you when you get close even if you don't strike okay that was much better let's pick up the spare and just start thinking positive after you the results to. yeah even yeah. if it's baby yeah. steps you know oh i didn't strike but all right that was a little better i can still do better right, let me go pick up the spare and we'll work on it again right you know, and especially at and my buddies have a great expression. You'll you'll hear it a couple of times. Um, they call it the Houdini double. And you know, Houdini was a magician. You know, a great magician. And you bowl a game, and you, you're just not you're not striking enough. But you're making all your spares, and then you throw the Houdini double. Comes out of nowhere. You throw the first shot. It might be a runaway Brooklyn on it the second. It could start one. as a really good break. Roll two pin. Right, exactly. Then they yeah. throw the next shot, and you throw a double, and then you shoot 2 0. Okay, without the Houdini double, you got 180. But if you didn't make your spares, you got 140. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we always call it the Houdini double. You're going to look to shoot 2 0. I didn't hit the pocket a bunch of times. I made all my spares. I concentrated. I kept it within reason that when I looked up, anytime I threw the double, I got a chance to shoot 2 0. And you know what? 2 0 is not a bad score at nationals if you're lost. Yeah. The important thing yeah. with tournaments, especially like long form tournaments and regionals and stuff, is let your low game be higher than everybody else's low game. Yeah, that's the key. 
That's right. If, if you don't have that blow up game, that 130, 140, 150. Yeah. You know, if you got a 180 or 190 in there, that's not, not the, the end of the world. world. Right. Exactly right. Exactly. You know, right. especially if if it's if it's a 180 or 190 where you went four bagger or five bagger to finish. Yeah. That's a positive for the next game. Correct. Like Correct. you're lined up, move on. Yeah. You know, or let's, at let's the end of the day, on. if you bowled bad all three games and you had a five bagger in a game, only shot 180, then then go drown your sorrows. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so it, it's important to slow down you know especially when things if things start to go south the game will get even faster you'll find yourself rushing to the line you'll find yourself just looking to hurry up and bowl where right. it should be taken the opposite take your time take a breath think about where you're setting your feet thinking about where you're shooting and then let the body take over so, you know, you got to think of it this way. When I when I was younger and practiced a, enough, I would think I would treat every shot I made in practice like I was trying to win the U.S. Open. Did you I run them out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ran every every shot in practice. I ran them right, out. Practicing oh, the double in the tenth and just I was running exhausted. them out. I was exhausted by the time I was done practicing because I ran them all out. No, yeah. but I treated every shot like it was the most important shot I was going to make when I was on the approach during practice so that when it came to the real game i was familiar with what that felt like mm -hmm. and that's the key you have to be able to get up there and perform and you can't let outside things get to you and and the worst thing is how fast things happen you have to control it you have to stay at an even keel mm -hmm. um if you have emotions go up and down during a six game or nine game tournament like the nationals forget it you know, you got too much going on. You know, they're tricky. You got to get it off your hand. And if you sit there and have negative talk or or get too fast, you're done. Mm -hmm. You know. You know what I always hate is like if I have 220 max going into the 10th frame. Yeah. That's my worst scenario, if, especially if I'm struggling. <laughs> because if I don't get that first hit, I'm not shooting 200. Yeah, that's the worst thing in the world, right? You know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I really, I really need, I really want this first hit. Right. I need I need I need this hit. Yeah. You know, because yeah. then it's yeah, all cherry from here. And you're not gonna get it. You know you're not gonna get it. <laughs> I bet I, I need a triple four pin. I'm, that's all it's gonna come down to. The, the I lightning. hope I hit the pocket at that point. <laughs> Pretty much. That's funny. All right. We ready it. for the next one? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Slide six. This ah, is a big one. This is huge. Huge. Huge lack of preparedness. So Obviously, with nationals, they don't publish the oil pattern. They don't even publish the song. They don't even publish the song till after what we found out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but there is the topography report that we talked about early on in an episode. You gotta look at that. I learned a bad lesson with that. Topography. And you found oh, out after the fact. Expensive lesson. Right. Should have been no but, brackets. But in a lot of tournaments, they do publish yeah. what you're going to bowl on. Get a pattern. And if you do a little research on the center, you can figure out what kind of lanes they have, whether they're AMF, HPLs, Brunswick, Anvil Lane, right. or other wood. You know, if you're bowling at a wood house, you need to know that ahead of time. If you don't know that <laughs> and you're going to a tournament to bowl and you didn't know it was wood, you're going to have a bad time. Card. You're going to have, yeah, you're going to have a bad I didn't know that. Well, you should have known that. There's no way you sh you should ever get beat because you were not prepared. Mm -hmm. Whether you're good or bad, if if you prepare yourself, then you did the best you could, and and you didn't get outworked. Um, you know, when I was a kid, my dad was a, a a professional baseball player, and he said to me, "If you want to be good at what you do, you have to take a hundred fly balls, a hundred ground balls, and a hundred swings every day." Yeah, you tell me, right? And I asked him why why that many. He said, because if you don't do it, the other guy is. Yeah, the other guy's already doing it. The other guy's doing it. So yeah. you don't want to put the effort into preparing to go to a bowling tournament. Well, just mail me the money. I'll give you the address. And Maybe at the half. end of the year, at the end of the year, I'll send you back half. You'll feel like you cashed. <laughs> that is a new service we're providing here at the Perception yeah, Versus Reality you Podcast. Can't, you can't go there if you're not going to prepare. Because then you're looking at luck is the reason you're going to get a check. Yeah. You know? Or by the 
the small chance that they push the wrong button on the oil machine and they they yeah. put out your house their, your own house shot exactly so you have to go there prepared and one of them is to do research on um the lane surface and and the pattern and nick and i spoke a little bit earlier about that the the problem people have is and and i'm not going to jump ahead when i talk about this but they'll see a short pattern they go oh urethane urethane yeah absolutely 100 percent. 30, 38 feet 36 feet urethane. throwing urethane throwing already urethane. committed how many mills did they put down uh what's a mill exactly so you need to learn how much how much oil is put on a lane um with each pass because you know right away oh it could be 40 mils that urethane ball is not going to help you you know um a 220 grit it could help yeah exactly exactly but not the grit that you had on it so you have to really learn if you're going to learn how to do it if you're going to bowl serious tournaments you have to learn all the parts and and all of the parts are you know look at the lane pattern you know um and how much oil they put down it, you know when they first started putting color in the oil on the tour hmm. every lane looks walled up doesn't it i mean you looked at the lanes this weekend with the uh, the, the uh, image put on the lanes yeah it's gonna throw a right of 10. it's got a hook back well what what people don't know is when you put the dye in the lane in the oil in order to see the dye it has to be over volume. over 20 over 20 uh units that's when the dye will show up right so if I have 20 units on the 10 board and and in, I could have 19 units on the nine board and it won't show up. Yeah, so, there's still a lot of oil out there. And that's, that's why still, you can't just and, throw it to the gutter and get it back. Yeah, and that's a flat pattern. And that's a flat pattern. But it just showed like it was more. You might have 25 units. Yeah, you know, and then twenty three or twenty one outside. It's a flat pattern, so you have to know what you're bowling on. You can't just look at a picture of it and go, "Oh, look at that!" It's uh, I'm gonna throw it up thirteen. You yeah. know, I'm gonna have hold and I'm gonna swing. You gotta learn. You gotta learn that. Now, so. generally, you yep. can get an idea of where your break point will be based on the length of the pattern. Absolutely, that's one Gen thing USBC did that was pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, minus thirty one. Yeah, the rule of uh, thirty-one, right? Thirty-one rule, right? So if it's forty-five foot, uh, you you look at thirty, you take thirty-one off, and that's where your ball has to come off the pattern at. Generally, generally speaking, that's mm -hmm. right. So there's yeah. a good starting point. Yeah, with the you know. with the cheetah pattern, thirty-five. Yeah, or back 35. in the day, it was thirty-five. So you, you, you need to be outside board, of five board. board. Yeah, right, four board off the at the end of the pattern. We bowled on a lot of cheetah, and before cheetah pattern, it was called pattern E. Where oh, is that what it was for? Yeah. And we bowled on a lot of old wood centers in the West. Yeah. yeah. Places yeah, I'd never gone to prior. Right. And yeah, that's um yeah, it, yeah. it's absolutely true. So I mean, I would do that as a starting point. You want to tip tip of the week from Nick and Phil is use a 31 rule to start. Mm -hmm. What's the length of the oil? Subtract 31. That's where your ball has to come off the back of the pattern. Yeah. So if you're on, on a 45 board. foot pattern, and you find yourself out by five board, guess what? You just shot 140. <laughs> congrats it's the rule of the 140 the rule of the, the rule of the 140 right so that's a, and there's an example of just not being prepared you didn't know that and you already gave away 60 pins good luck and good bowling yep start squeezing now <clears throat> exactly start the vice grip yeah all right so uh, go ahead cho choosing the right arsenal with the bowling balls you're comfortable with and confident with yeah that um like that's that, an interesting that, one that's an interesting one because how do you pick? Okay, so for our, our sake, we're gonna I'm bringing six bowling balls to Reno. Yeah, yeah. And one of them is gonna be Purple Hammer because that's my spare ball as well. Okay, how'd you start that process? How did I start what? The process of selecting those six. I haven't started yet. How will you start the process? I usually stop start from the top down. So immediately I'm thinking first game out of the block. What am I gonna need? to blend out the pattern because it's going to okay. be typically a little more wet dry i need something that's going to have a little grit that's going to be a little bit stronger and slower so right. i'm either going to need a stronger asymmetrical option mm -hmm. or a stronger symmetrical option right to get me out of the first game if urethane isn't in play so 
Um, and then from there, you know, you're going to look at bowling balls are going to get you through the, the bulk of your games. You know, once the patterns break down and develop a little bit, I still need something that's a little controllable, but stronger and more on the back end. Right. So then you'll look at your more benchmark symmetricals and start to get into some, some pearls that have maybe a little surface on it. Okay. Um, and, and then, you know, you need to look at bowling balls that, okay, well, if they absolutely burn up and break down, I need something that's cleaner and a little more flip. So that's when balls like, you know, Katana Assault, Black Widow 2.0 Hybrid will start right. coming into play where before that, like an Outer Limits would probably be more of that smoother, stronger yes. mid-range ball. So I haven't picked my arsenal yet. You know, right. there's still time. Yep. But, you know, picking those five, you know, that's the, the you got to pick at least one or two balls that are going to be a little slower. Yeah. One or two for the middle parts. And hopefully there's some overlap there because you're, you're, you never know what exactly you're going to need. And then you're going to need some bowling balls that are cleaner. I typically so, never have an issue with too much hook. I can always control too much hook right. with my ball speed and loft. Yeah. So I'm probably never going to bring a ball like, um, you know, like a raw hammer or a rhino yeah, or speaker. something that's super weak, right? You know, mm -hmm. where I don't think the lanes are gonna to develop that much. Where I'm gonna need something that that doesn't have a lot of friction built into it, right? So you're more sophisticated in how you predict how you predict what you're gonna bring with you. I, on the other hand, are somewhat archaic. Yeah, you know, I'll lay out if I have eight balls that I have drilled. I'll just kick out every other one. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're just going to throw Intel anyway, right? <laughs> one through eight goes from the weakest to the strongest. Yeah. If I start at the high end, I'll take eight, six, four, two. If I want something to go from the low end, I'll go one, three, five, seven. And that's what I take. I mean, that's great. I mean, when I was bowling I regionals full great. time, I had three I'm balls. Exactly right. I had three right. balls that I brought to every tournament, and they pretty much saw action at every tournament. And then right. I added a couple here and there on one was, end or the other. Right. But right. I was going to, or just in the middle, just in between, you know, for yeah, whatever yeah, reason. But yeah. those three balls were going to get the majority of the playing time. And if those right. didn't work, I probably didn't cash. Yeah. See, I, I don't, what you do is you look at what you think you're going to need based on how you're going to play the lanes. I'm probably going to need something this way, that way. You know, and I may not, I probably have lost my edge by, by not doing that, but I just laid them all out and say, this one, this one, this one, this one, and it's every other ball. Yeah. You know, well, it goes in a game plan. You know, I, I have an yeah, idea. Game I have an idea of where I want to play the lanes. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, no. And I understand, you know, yeah. I, um, I, the reason I, I can't, I don't do that is I just know what my next move is off that ball. You know, so I, yeah, I, no I don't equipment. think there's right. I don't think there's a lot of moving around on for you. patterns, and, and and maybe that's why I'm left-handed. Um, maybe it's not because uh, I don't have to move all over the place. I'm not going to have to move zones. No. You know, I, I'll use the 31 rule to start. We'll get an idea what the 31 rule is to start, and that's the zone I'm probably going to stay in. And I'm just going to try to stay there and change balls. You also don't want to get in the zone where the right-handers are. You know you're going to be all over me, right? Exactly right. Yeah, right. especially with more right. surface being thrown than than Absolutely. typical league. So that's why I try to go a, a, a ball that's one step, two steps up. Yeah, you know, four or five board difference in the, in the amount of hook, and those are the balls I take. And I change my hand position, I move my feet, but I try to stay as much as I can in that spot. And and even for for league, you know, if you think about your league bag um, or tra or local travel, if you're bowling on house shots, you got to just sort of look at do i need something a little stronger or a lot stronger and you know you the worst thing is to bring in 10 balls <laughs> and not be able to strike with any of them and I, yeah because you're confused i'm gonna try this i'm gonna try that i'm trying to yeah you know have your core and then build around it and also don't forget about your accessories yeah well. you're gonna things are gonna come up and it always seems like when you're traveling when you fly somewhere right Oh man, my 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 slide sole just came off. The Velcro went bad. Uh, my thumb came out. I had a thumb break at nationals um, 
2021 at the plaza my third shot in practice <laughs> my my i threw my practice shot mm. you know i was you playing know. out towards the gutter to, to break them down and i threw it in the gutter and the ball rattled around as it went through the gutter and it and it chipped off a chunk of my thumb right my inner <laughs> i wasn't prepared i didn't have another thumb so guess what <laughs> luckily my boy memo over there in the yep in the booth in the in the booth I sent him a message. I'm like, hey man, I need a new inner, like as fast as you possibly can. Right. right? So um I just told him what I needed drilled. I'm like, I need a one and 30 second hole drilled. Here's the pitch. You know, I gave him a ball to you know use as the so he can put the inner in and then drill off of it. But here's the pitch, here's the hole size. I just need a little bevel, buzz out the sides just a smidge, good to go. Right. And uh, he got it back to me in like the second or third frame. So I taped it up and did all that. But I had to bowl the first three, four frames with my thumb that was had a chunk broken out of it. Um, so without that extra thumb, you better believe I'm taking extra thumbs with me wherever I go now. Just one. Yeah. But that was on me. If I didn't have that kind of hookup at the. Yeah, you'd have been the, dead in the water. Yeah. If I, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the way people are. Well, nowadays with the interchangeables, you got to have, you know, two thumbs, three thumbs, or whatever. If you swell or don't swell, you know, I'm a round hole tape guy. Yeah, and I'm glad I was too because it was easy to get a. Oh, that's right. You were right, right. But I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of work done. So to me, I drill every ball round hole and just tape it up. Um, But you're right. You know, you have to go there realizing that you're going to need certain things. Maybe need a little easy slide. Get your thumb out of the ball. My hand swells in the state of Nevada. My my lips chap and my thumb swells. <laughs> he has fifty thumbs. Yeah, because I shrink in the in 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 uh, in Montana. Yeah, it could. So be when freezing. I go there, I have to have a different thumb from Montana. You kill me. It could be me. freezing cold. It, it's it's sometimes me. freezing cold in the stadium. Put tape in it. I already have like 10, 15 pieces in there, but I'm just mm. saying, like, mm. bring tape. Like I you don't have tape. Today, man. My thumb swelled. Here, keep going. Just hold on, I got you something. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, hold what on. You got? Go what? on. Go on. You got the violin again? Is that yeah, the I got violin? the violin. Well, yeah, I, I got the violin. violin. Here, I got the little tiny violin. Go ahead. My thumb is no good. Look at that. He's got. <laughs> I have 15 pieces of tape. What am I gonna do? Well, let me go get another thumb. But then when they break out, you wonder why. Look what happened. My thumb broke. Whatever. Very Next. nice. Okay. No, I'm, keep, I'm a friend of you on Facebook if I knew how to do it. No game plan going into the tournament. That's interesting because um, if you have an idea, if you looked at the pattern and you looked at, you got your equipment with you, you looked at the pattern, you got some Scotch Bright pads or uh, Sierra pads that you're going to use to adjust the surface, you have a game plan. You know, and, and trying to figure out the game plan, plan during practice. Is usually not good unless you have a practice before time, you know, the, the day before. And like Nick said, a lot of times they don't play the same, they might be tighter down lane the second day. But you have to have a game plan that you can build around. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, you got to be prepared. And again, if the other guy's prepared, and if you're both the same talent and he's more prepared than you, he beats you. It's pretty simple. That is pretty simple, it's very simple. Yeah, he simplified it so much. It really and, is. I mean, you think about it, you got to do the work. Right. And the last one, which I'm worried about you. Yeah. Yeah. Being physically capable of competing. Endurance. Yeah. You know what? And and again, yeah, I got a bad knee. Um, and that usually you, gets gets worse. Yeah. I mean, if, if you mm-hmm. bowl three games a week and you don't practice and yeah. you're looking to go bowl an eight game tournament and this is your yeah. first tournament. Yeah. You're going to be in trouble. You're in, a, you're in for a shock. Things happen to your hand and body in eight games that they yep. don't. Yeah, yeah. That's the bottom and, line. And you got to build up to it, you know. Um, Earl Anthony used to practice until he was very tired, exhausted. Then he practiced a little more so that he could execute shots when he was tired. Mm-hmm. And that's a good way to practice, you know. Throw shots and you start to get tired. Rather than just pack it in, bowl, you know, half a game more. That you're yeah. executing when you're in that stre- that stressed, uh, tired situation, you know, yeah. and that's one way to get ready for a, um, 
for a tournament. That's a, that's a little different kind of tired. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that, that does work on your endurance, but I mean, you also have to word think about the pace that you're bowling at in the tournament. <clears throat> Absolutely. My biggest problem at nationals is walking all over the place. You I don't know. like to sit down. Yeah, but I'm talking about taking the balls from the booth or wherever they are. Oh yeah, that's a that's and a then long dragging walk. them all over the place. You know, I um, I, I I don't like to bring out more than one bag, so mm -hmm. that's why you know even like when I go bowl the bowlers journal, yeah. I bring everything to the bowlers journal. Yeah, you know, and that's in in Reno. It's not terrible. You're in you're in the same place, but at South Point. I mean, think about that. You got the bowling balls in a locker up by the uh, by the arena. And now you're going to go bowl a bowler's journal at the main center. I ship stuff. Ship? How do you I ship, ship it to the... I ship everything. To where? Wherever I want. Wherever they'll bring it to me. So you put the balls in a locker by the in the stadium. Yeah. I mean, in the, yeah, in the arena. Absol absolutely. Absolutely. And you're going to bowl the bowler's journal in the main bowling center. Well, well, why don't you just ship two sets of arsenals to each? <sighs> I knew this was going to go bad sooner or later. I knew it would. <laughs> anyway, that, that part Hi, alone hey, is exhausting. You, you anyway. got plenty of money. Just give a kid $10 to drag yeah. your bag to, here, I need this on lane 10 on the regular plaza. Right, we were coming park. down the escalator one time. My buddy Joey's behind me. And I dropped my bag, and now the bag fell at the end of the escalator. Oh. And he's coming down behind me. He had to jump over my bag, and he's got yeah. a bad leg. It's great. We could have almost killed him. Good job. And the, and the seven old ladies after him would have been a murder. I'd have been like a serial killer. Uh, I would. I would have called that like uh, involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, I would have done. I would have done time in uh, <sighs> Clark County Prison. Clark County Prison. All right. Let's CNN. go on the next slide. Right. We got a couple next more. Slide. Okay. <laughs> I mean, keeping your equipment maintained, you know, surfaces, not fresh, oil, not extracted. I mean, if you have a full arsenal of stuff, I mean, typically you're probably not putting a ton of games and everything, but if you got right. one ball that you use more than others, there's a good chance that your grips are going to be worn out and you may not yeah. know it because grips don't just wear out overnight. They go slow. So you don't realize <laughs> it until you get to a tournament and you're right. like, you know what? This ball feels really sloppy compared to the rest of them. They you all got to feel the same. Right. And then yeah. changing your tape out. You know, if you have tape in there that's not white anymore, that used to be white, <laughs> you know, and you're going to say Las Vegas in June, it's going to be gooey. It might be gooey. And guess what? You're not getting out of that thumb hole. Let's talk about that for one second. Let's talk. About Here's it. a scenario. You're going to love this one. This is it's happened to me. As knowledgeable as I am about bowling and prepared as I have about bowling, it's happened to me. I got one in the front, one white in the front, four black in the back, or whatever I got, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now the white gets gooey. I got to yeah. take it out. Yeah. Yeah. What What am I going to – I go many times, do not have a cleaning – Cleaner solution. Looking, clean out the, the goo. Yeah. To put that tape in, to take the tape out and put new tape in. Well, that comes down to the last point here. Get, you need to check your stuff out before you go. Yeah, yeah. Or in your case, have more than one piece of white and then back off on the black so you can yeah, replace no, no, that top right. piece, that top yep. piece so you still have that texture. Or since COVID, I have collected all of the wipes that they gave me on the airplane. There you go. And I have like 20 of them <laughs> and they're yeah. in my bag. They used to make, uh, Columbia used to make those little wipes and the little. We did. Uh, we did. We did. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> Those I know, but great. you know, I, I don't like carrying a bottle of anything when I go travel. No, because it ends up all over the place. Neither does the TSA, by the way. They don't like that either. No, I drink that, <laughs> but I put those little wipes. I keep them in my bag, and you know, the little alcohol wipes. So when yeah. I have to take tape out when I'm traveling, I can clean that thumb hole. So a lot of you know, I tell you the other part: if you swell, you got to tape all the tape out of the back of your thumb, and you can't get that goo off. You're done. Yeah. You know. So good luck. Yeah, good luck. So you have to have little stupid stuff like that, little tricks. Yeah. Um, so, so going back right. to surfaces a little bit, yeah, you, you don't necessarily want to resurface all your stuff before you go and say, oh, okay, I'm going to need this one at 500, 1,000. I'm going to need that one yeah. at 2,000. Right. Bring, bring pads with you because you can adjust your surfaces in practice and you can get a better idea when you're there. Okay, I really like this ball. I just need a little bit more surface just to get it to slow down a little more. Right. If, if you already go in there and the ball's 1,000 grit, 
you're going to have a lot harder time bringing that surface up than you would bringing it down. Correct. So That's br correct. bring a variety of pads with you. I always bring 800, 1000, 2000. That's pretty much, and maybe a 1500 pad. But right. typically if I just need to knock the shine off of something to give it a little grit, 2000. But if I'm yeah. starting out, probably a light 1000 maybe a 1500 sure sure and if i really needed to dig in something if i need to like touch up a urethane ball or something 800 grit or you could roll it around in the parking lot well it's a long walk remember it's true. yeah remember it is All throw right. it down the escalator it's a great idea next slide <laughs> wrong choices yeah so going into the tournament with the mindset of playing the lanes like you do at home like, hey, I am a, I'm a, I stand on the second, I stand on the big dot, I throw at the second arrow. That's my line. I'm staying there until it comes to me. Right. It's great <laughs> if it works, but guess what? <laughs> the USBC knows that works on house shots. Maybe they're tricking us this year. They're going to put that out. No one found it. No one found it yet because nobody, nobody thought nobody to throw. There. Nobody yeah. thought about standing on a big dot, throwing it up 10. Uh, yeah. You got to you got to have an open mind going into the tournament. Um, you know, you have to be able to recognize what's going on around you. Look, that's why I tell you go there early. Look at the other people, how they're playing them. Go right. to the pair you're bowling on. Watch the and teams. Watch the team. Watch the teams. And go, and go look at the go look at that chart, the um, topography chart. Yeah, go find if you're in uh, happen to see bowlers bowling well and working together. Yep. Hang out behind their pair and watch. There's so much information you can get from watching. Yeah, you got to do that. You got to go sit there. For me, that's know. more important than, than practicing on the pattern. Yeah. If I can watch other bowlers do it, I'm, I'm going to yeah. have a better idea. You know, that's usually the one time I, I sometimes am a little rude. Um, <laughs> you? Nicker. If I go to that tournament, I'm there to bowl. And I don't mind saying hello to people and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'll get there early and go sit down in the stands and watch the pair I'm bowling on, if there's any lefties around there or whatever. And, and inevitably somebody wants to go up and have a chat. Yeah. You know, so there I am trying to pay attention. And I don't want to sound like I'm rude and not pay attention to the guy, but I'm not listening to the person that's talking to me. We need to get you some over the ear. Uh, I, I, I'm telling you, I need, I need them because maybe, I want to watch, you know, I'm, I'm there as a bowler now. I'll pay, I'll pay for a face tattoo that says buzz off. <laughs> But you got to go do it. You got to sit there and you got to put the time in. That's part of preparedness. You got to be ready. You got to have yeah. something nobody else has. And that's one of the things, the mindset. Right. You know, so. And um, if, once again, if things, frames, yeah, if things yeah. start going bad, don't throw away frames because you're frustrated. I've seen so many times yeah. people leave a, say, a, you know, a washout, whatever. And they don't even try right. to, you know, they just right. go up and just huck it and they miss three count, yeah. you know. Yeah. Get all you can. Get every pin you can. Like, okay, right. like you right. went to the you went to the face three six ten and you just fast track it and chop it, or you miss it way right, right. and you just wait. you know it's like you know how many pins you give away from being upset and being frustrated. Sure, sure. The other thing is we didn't talk about it as much, but if if you feel bowing for money is is an issue, don't get into brackets. You know, and and then somebody will say, "Wow, look how good you bowled! You didn't get in the brackets." Well, would you have bowled that good if you did? Right. So you have to sort of look at it and say, you know what? The money's important to me. You know, I can't afford it. Um, but I want to bowl. I want to bowl. And the brackets make you squeeze. Don't get in the brackets. We'll get in way less. You know, mm -hmm. there's no big deal. Um, yeah, you, remember, you, you're there to win an eagle. Well, or at least cash. Cash, right. Because you yeah. want to be competitive. You want to have a good showing. And you don't want to add something to the pile that's going to make it worse. Or make you, you know? feel worse if you have a bad day. Yeah. Oh, I shot 160 the first game. There goes all my brackets. Well, there there's your day. You know, there's your day. Mm -hmm. So. So battling poor ball reaction with the wrong ball for too long. Can't out bowl bad ball reaction. Mm -hmm. Can't. Can't. So do we it. got a question there. Wrong ball. How do you know what too long really means? Um, depends on the scoring pace. Yes. If you're not striking and everybody else is, you're in the wrong ball or yeah. you're in the wrong part of the lane or both. Right. Right. Exactly. But, you know, again, you got to watch what's going on around you. 
Yeah. You know, on your pair, even with your guys, if you're there, your team, who's who's playing them the right way, who's whacking them. And we're talking about Nationals. I'm talking about any tournament you go mm -hmm. to. You know, you could be um, hitting the pocket every single shot and not striking on a, on a house shot or a local tournament. And you, you have to – Mark Roth once said, the difference between a great bowler and a good bowler is a great bowler made the move before the good bowler even thought about it. Mm -hmm. They get so ahead you of watch it. it. Yeah, yeah. You got to be ahead of it. You got to look at the at what's going on. If you're leaving 10 pins and you don't know why you're leaving the 10 pin, well, if you're throwing it good, you can tell that. And you got to be honest with yourself. Just because the ball went forward towards the head pin doesn't mean it should strike. Just because you hit the pocket doesn't, doesn't mean it mean was a good shot. shot. Right, exactly. If you feel you made really good shots and you're leaving 10 pins or whatever you are, okay, you're probably in the wrong ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what ball do you do? You have to notice we did a whole segment on that. Watch how the 10 pin goes out. Ring 10s, lay, lazy 10, swishy 7s. We talked about that whole segment. So you got to be able to recognize what, what my ball needed to be doing. Um, the worst thing to do is lying to yourself, thinking that you're throwing it good and I'm not striking. You know that, if you threw it good. That's just ego. And you want to put your money again, send me the money. And at the end of the year, I'll send you back half and you can tell everybody you cashed because if that ego gets in the way, then you're never going to make money bowling. You're not going to do well in tournaments. You know, you have to, you have to recognize what's going on and be honest. Um, and then watch what other people are doing. You know, yeah. what are they throwing? You know? Yeah. To get an idea, you need information. It's all about the more you can get. Kind of if you process. have bowlers that bowl like you, yeah, that are nearby, that are playing the lanes and yeah. doing something different. Taking yeah. taking an idea of what they're throwing, right? What part of the lanes they're doing. Yep. You know, it could be a small change for you, but that's the difference between striking and not striking. Yeah, too long is you know if it's too long. If you make three or four really good shots in a row and you left the same thing, that's the definition of insanity. Do something Do different. different. Do something different. That's right. And then on the flip side. The guy who, or girl, who goes to changing balls right away mm -hmm. when they mistake a bad shot for bad ball yeah. reaction. Yeah. And I watch a lot of flow, bow, not flow bowling, whatever it's called now, bow, uh, bowl TV. And I watch a lot of the pros and I watch a lot of the games. And inevitably, I'll see a guy make a five or six really good shots, strike a couple of times, and then he'll make an execution, make a bad shot. Not miss his target. He just physically didn't throw it good comes back and goes in the bag for another ball because that reaction wasn't good. How many times I've seen that at bowling ball demos back in the day where yeah, we yeah. get someone fitted into a generic fit for their, right. to try out a new ball. They go up, they hang up in the thumb it gets three off the left. That ball sucks. <laughs> that ball sucks. <laughs> that ball sucks. <laughs> Operator error. That ball <laughs> sucks. Yeah. 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 Way yeah, too well, long. Yeah. Or what do I need? And you tell them they need a lesson. Yeah. Not, not a ball. You so, to, a you ball. know, you got to be honest with the shot and you got to realize <clears throat> if you're not pure in them, then you have to expect anything, something less than perfect. Yeah. If you're pure in it and you're not striking, it's the ball. But if you're not pure in it, and you're changing balls, you're just going to amplify the problem. And knowing which ball to go to, to give you that extra kick it's in prepared. that same zone, that's right. being prepared and knowing your equipment. That's very that's important. Right. Yeah, you got to put the time in. I'm telling you, that's the most important thing. Go put the time in. If you're going to bowl tournaments, put the time in. If you're going to be a social bowler, bowl once in a while with your buddies, different story. Fine. But yeah, don't no, get upset. The, you can't be upset about it. You can't get mad at yourself. You can't have negative talk that I, you know, I got, what am I going to do? I'm, you know, I'm terrible. No, you know what? You're just maybe not prepared. Go Damn prepare two-handers. I hate them. No, uh, I don't hate them. <laughs> anyway. All right. Final slide. And this one uh, kind of goes towards more bowling PBA events, regionals. Yeah. And sometimes that on the draw of what your, your squad is going to be mm -hmm. at nationals star watching. Oh God. How many, <laughs> you know, when I bowled my first us open, I was like 60% bowler, 40% fan. I'm here. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. I'm bowling with Ricky Ward and I'm bowling next to, I don't know, Norm Duke. Yeah. It's like, yeah. wow, this is awesome. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's, like you're, it's very, e it's very easy to be distracted by a star player. Right. Especially if they're doing well, because all the attention is going to be on them. 
Yeah. It's just Absolutely. a natural thing to, to be drawn to someone that is a high caliber player. Yeah. And you if you are a, a go ahead, I'm sorry. You become a spectator. Yeah. If you're a beginner bowling tournaments to take it to the level down or two, um, and the, and the best bowler from the house is on your pair, you could be intimidated by that Absolutely. quite easily, you know, and you got to remember, he's not, it's not an offense defensive game. You know, you're not going to have the defensive. You want to go out there and get as many pins as you can on every shot you throw. So you got to pay attention to why you're there and what you're doing. You know. Yeah. Now, if you want to be a spectator, go sit down for the next squad and watch them bowl. Yeah, buy pro am tickets. Yeah, buy them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we got. So that was all we had today. It took a long time. Yeah, I told you that was going to take a while. I know. We have any questions that we can touch real quick? 